Previously, you learned how to set up a basic SwiftUI project using Xcode. In real life, applications have many views and elements have values that need to be stored by the application and retrieved later. Many of these elements need to be displayed on the screen and updated at some point. These updates can be the result of some calculation or user input. In this video, you'll learn how to create variables that can be created in views and observed and can communicate these updates or changes, exploring how user interface elements benefit from observing variable changes. Say, for example, that the Little Lemon restaurant wants their application to calculate a discount for first-time app users. To achieve this, you can use a text field and a text element. Text fields are used in SwiftUI to let the user type characters, like the one you might fill in when you use the sign-up form on a particular website. Text elements are more passive. They can only display elements sent to them by the application itself and cannot be modified by the user. Now suppose that Little Lemon wants the text field in this particular application to receive just numbers. And once the value is typed, for a calculation to be done, in this case, a discount. The result is displayed in the text element. For this, a function must be created inside the application, named, for example, discount, to calculate the discount and variables must be created to store the input value and final result. After that, everything must be tied together. Creating variables to store the input and the result is more or less like you would do in any other programming language. However, SwiftUI works in a way that the interface reacts to variables and vice versa. So to make the magic happen, you must precede the variable with the keyword state. This prefix state is called a property wrapper. This line of code tells SwiftUI that the variable input value is of type double and its initial value is zero. The property wrapper state is generally used inside a view that is structure or struct for short and with simple data types such as int, string, double and arrays. Normally, a struct does not let its value be modified, so marking the variable with the state property wrapper tells SwiftUI to move its storage out from the struct and into shared storage managed by SwiftUI. The beauty of a state variable is that it behaves like a regular variable, allowing reading and writing values, and contains an internal mechanism that notifies view controls of any changes to it. In the Little Lemon app, for example, the first state variable input value is connected to the text field to store its value. The second state variable called result value is connected to the text element in a way that updates the display automatically as soon as the discount is calculated and the result is stored in the result value variable. However, using the state property wrapper is generally only good if you're working inside a view. Suppose you need to pass the value to another view. How will this other view update the passed value or react to changes to that variable? Well, you need to add another property wrapper called binding to the second view. The binding property wrapper will tell the second view that it needs to create a bind between its internal variable and the original one passed. In this case, you are creating a variable named binding value, also of type double, which is a binding variable. If binding value is tied to result value, for example, as soon as the result value changes, the binding value will change and vice versa. So far, you've learned about two property wrappers, state and binding, that are proper to use within structs. But what happens if you want the interface to update and react to changes of values in classes? That's where observable object and its companion, the property wrapper, observed object, come in. These elements work exclusively for classes. For this, you must declare a class as an observable object. You must then declare the instance of such a class in another part of the application using the observed object property wrapper. Now you can connect any property inside the model class to an interface element on the view using it, and it will react to changes. In this video, you learn how to create mechanisms that react to changes and update interface elements automatically which you will discover more about as you progress through this course.